So in this video lecture, I'm going to talk about the properties of logarithms. Okay, so as you can see here, there's 11 properties uh, that you that you should know, okay, that you need to remember. Okay? Uh, so let's just briefly go through each one of these. Okay? So the first two properties are based on the fact that natural log um, and e, so natural log x and e to the x are inverse functions of each other. So in other words, right, um, if you take the natural log of e to the x, then that's going to give you back whatever that x is. Likewise, if you take e of natural log of x, then that's going to give you back whatever's in the, whatever the argument is here. Okay, so when I say argument, that's the input here. Okay, And that, again, that is coming from um, the composition of taking the function and f inverse. Okay, because if you remember... Right. Remember, we talked about right, if you take f composed of f inverse, right, then that's going to give you back x. Okay? Likewise, if you have f inverse composed of f and your input being x, this is going to give you back the identity function x. Okay, So that is... So these two come direct, are basically from this idea, from this concept, okay? The third, well, the, the third one, fourth one, and fifth one, uh, those are the ones that we're gonna look at closely, okay? Uh, with some examples. Okay. So if you take, so if you have log of x times y, okay? And some base, then you can rewrite this as log x with the same base plus log y B, where B is the base. So in other words, you can expand this logarithm. Okay, so there's a so there's a multiplication here, but can be shown okay that you can expand this over over addition. Okay. Likewise, you have one for the quotient. Okay, you're taking log of x over y with base b. So we can split this up. So it's going to be log of x. Okay, whatever the base is minus the log of y. Of base B. Okay. So again, that's a way you can expand the logarithm. Okay. So this is so the product goes becomes plus, right? The quotient becomes the minus. Okay. So the, the way I used to remember this was that okay, you have multiplication here, right? So x times y. So um, so if you think about the multiplications like a, like an x, okay. So if you rotate that x, it gives you positive, okay. Similarly, right, if you have this quotient, okay, think of that this is division, right? So that looks like a minus, okay? So that's kind of, I hope, I mean, that's, you know, a good a way to remember this. Uh, the, the fifth one, okay, is it's saying that you can bring down the y in front of the log, okay? So you bring that down, and it's, you have y times log of x base b. So this, okay, so this is, Right, so you're left with this, and then y is just getting multiplied. So, so y here is acting as a coefficient. Okay, right? for example, coefficient meaning like if you have four times x, four being the coefficient. Okay. Uh, number six. Okay. Um, so, it, th what this is saying is that if the two base, if these values, right, so this value is equal to this. Okay. So, if this is the same, then whatever y is, that's what you're going to get back. Okay. So, it's as simple as that. Okay. This one says that, okay, if you have B raised to this, where it's log Y base B, then if these are the same, that means that you're gonna automatically get, get back this, okay? So I'll clear, oh, just draw some arrows there to show you. Okay, so whatever this is, as long as this is, as long as this is the same, okay, then you're gonna get back okay, this, same thing here, okay? If these are the same, then these have to, right? These are going to be the same. Okay, these have to match. Okay. All right. Uh, number eight and nine and and ten. These are um, basically you're given an equation and then their equivalent forms. Okay. So this is log x, whatever base equals y. Okay. That just means this is the same thing. Okay. This is the same as taking b. Okay. The, the space raised to y equals to x. Okay. All right. And this is um, 
This is actually something that's derived in the um, in the early part of the chapter. Okay, so again, this is sort of a, um, a summary. Um, some of these, so these are new, and then these are some some of these have already been introduced. Okay. Um, the next one is okay if you have okay log of x base b equals log of y base b. Okay, so if so. If these are the same, right? That means if their outputs are the same, then in order for that to be true, then that means the inputs have to be equal to each other. Okay. Right. Likewise here. Okay. If you if this output, whatever this is, is the same as this, that means x must be equal to y. Okay. And again, the double arrow means that it works both sides. So if you have this, this is true. This one is true, okay, and this one is true. Okay, so you can go in the opposite way. This goes here, this one here, and this one here. Okay? And this one, again, this is especially important. Okay, all right. So um, basically, this is the logarithm form, and this is the exponential form. Okay, again, they're the same, right? They're, they're, they're equivalent forms. So if you're to graph this one and graph this one, you'll see that the graph looks the same. Okay. The next one is the what's called the change of base formula, okay, for logarithms. So what it says is if, if you have log x with some base, then you can split this up over, over um, division. So this will be log x, okay, divided by log of base b. And because log, okay, remember log, when we say log of e, So if I'm letting the base be e, this is the same thing as the natural log function, right? This is right? this is the natural base. Okay. okay. That's a natural base. Okay. And by the way, if in a problem, if you see something with just log without any specific number, let's say log five, okay? If you don't, if, so by default, if there's no number there, um, then this means that they're automatically using base 10, okay? So no, so if you don't see a base here, it automatically means that um, they're, they're using base 10. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's let's go through some examples here. Okay, um, I think, let me write the, I'll write these underneath here so y'all can see that just in case. Okay, let's, okay, go through each one of these. Okay, so this, right, notice that the this value and this value are the same, okay? So whenever you see that, remember, okay, right, um, you have these two, okay? So, right, so in this case, you have, the, you have this number three all raised to log 18 base three. So that follows this form, okay? You have some base, okay, right, where the base is the, is the, is the constant, okay? 
raised to something like this. Okay, so if these are the same, that means you're going to get back y. So in this case, the answer is going to be 18. Okay, so it's whatever, right? Whatever that is. Okay, it's that. It's in this case 18. The next one, okay, same kind of idea, okay, except this time you have, um, let's say you have two, all right, so raised to log of negative five base two. Okay. Again, because these, okay, these two are the same, then you're going to end up getting back whatever is in that, right, whatever is here, okay, just like over here, right, these are the same. So therefore, this is going to this whole thing is equal to eighteen. Okay. So therefore, right, this is going to be equal to minus five. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, okay. The other one is something of this form, right? Which which is number involves number six. Okay. So you have log of base, right? Log of base to the power y to the base b. So if these are equal then this result is going to give you back whatever the y is. So in this case, we have one half here, okay? One half and one half, right? So therefore, this result is going to be 20. Okay. And then number four, that goes back to the first property. So if you take natural log e to the x, that's going to give you back x. Okay? So this is going to give us back three. Oops. All right. Um, so what if we had something like this? We'll do a fifth one here. We have e to the natural log seven. Well, it's the same idea, right? Um, in this case, you're using a number two. So e and natural log, they right, they undo, right? They undo each other, okay? Because they're inverses of each other. So therefore, this result is going to give you, give us back seven. Okay, again, remember, natural log, so natural log x and, and e to the x are inverse functions of each other. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at some uh, more involved problems uh, using using these properties here. Okay, so we want to take this expression, right? This this function, and uh, express that as a sum of logarithms. So, in other words, this is the same thing, right? Um, right, same thing as saying um, that we want to expand this logarithm. Okay. Okay. We want to expand this. So, what does that mean? Well, that means we're going to use one of these, okay? So sometimes these are referred to as expansion formulas for logarithms, okay? So we're expanding it out, right? Okay. So in this case, you identify, right? You identify what you have in the argument here, okay? Inside these parentheses. So we have x squared times the cube root of x minus one, okay? So that tells us that we have a product here, okay? 
Okay, so we have a product. So what we want to do is you utilize uh, this this number three property. Okay. okay. All right. So okay. Um, so let's do that. Let's apply this. Okay. So we're going to have log okay, log base two of x squared. Okay. That's for the first right, the first one. Okay. Plus okay. So multiplication, right? We're using this one, so we need a plus. Okay. So we take log of each of each part. Okay. First one, x squared. This one, right here. Okay. So this is what we call expanding, right? We're expanding the log. All right, so the next thing is um, that ideally we, we can simplify this some more, okay? And if we take a look, right, we can utilize number five, okay? In fact, I'm gonna, I think what I'll do is I'll number these. So we used, first one we used number three, okay? Next thing we wanna do is we wanna take care of the powers here. Okay, so we have a power of two on here, right? Okay. And we also have a power here. So if we re we can rewrite this way. Okay. Remember that, right? The cube root. Right, the cube root of something can be written as whatever that is, right? This raised to one third. Okay, that's going back to this algebra rule. Okay, if you have right x to the one third, that's the same thing as writing cube root of x. Okay. 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 So now, now that we've expressed this. So now we've got the power here. What we can do is we can use property, right? we can use property five. Okay, so we can bring down the two. So we're gonna have two times log of X base two. So, okay, so that's all we did. All we did is just bring that in the front, okay? And then we can do the same thing with the other one. We can bring one third in the front front of this and there it is okay okay there's our expanded result right. so again we apply number three we have a product it goes plus and then we we use a little bit of we use some algebra here this is equivalent to this, and then we could, right, we can bring down the powers in front, okay, in front of the logs. Okay. Very useful, by the way. Um, this is used um, in, uh, used in um, doing some of the um, derivatives in, in calculus, because we have some function like this, and then we want to find what's called a derivative, and so by it, taking this and expressing it this way, it's a, it becomes a lot easier to do. Okay. All right, let's look at another example here.
Okay, so we have our function here. We have log of x to the four over x squared plus three squared. And I'm gonna put, just gonna put this in parentheses just to emphasize that this is our argument or log. Okay. So again, what we want to do is we want to take this and express it as a difference. So in other words, we want to expand this. And so to do that, right, we're going to use property four. So property four, you have this over this, right? log of this. So you're going to take log of X minus log of Y. All right, let's do that. Okay, so we, we applied number four here, okay? Next thing is that we need to take care of those exponents, okay? All right, so we can, right? So we can uh, use, again, use uh, property, property five. Okay, so the four comes in front. So we have four times log of x base six, and then minus two log base six of x squared plus three. Okay. And there's our there's our result. Okay, in an expanded form. So Compared to, right, so if you're to graph this one and graph this expression, you'll see it's the same graph, okay? Okay, next one, say we have, okay, again, we want to write the natural log of x cubed. So x cubed times square root of x minus two, all divided by x plus one squared. as a sum and difference of logarithms. Okay, so this, in this case, we need to use, um, we're gonna end up using um, both of these. Okay, um, and in fact, we also have to use five. Uh, because obviously we have, right, we have a product here, x cubed times the square root of x minus 2, and all that is being divided by x plus 1 squared. Okay? So let's first apply, uh, let's go ahead and first apply the uh, number 4. So we have a right quotient. So we're going to have natural log. Okay. By the way, okay, these also, so anywhere you see log here, this also applies to natural log because if B was E, right, remember if B is E, then it's natural log, okay? So we can use that here, okay? 
So we have natural log of x cubed times the square root of x minus two. Okay. That's the top part minus the bottom, Not minus the natural log of the bottom. Okay. All right, so we applied number four. Now what we can do is we can apply the product, right? This one for right? this one for here. Okay, so we can right? we have a product there. Okay, so we can expand that. So this is going to give us natural log of x cubed okay? plus okay? natural log of square root of x minus two. And then we have this part. So here's a good rule of thumb. Um, is that when you have, so when you have, when you, if you're using parentheses here, then it's a good rule to use brackets, kind of alternate, it helps kind of with the, understand what's going on, okay? I mean, technically, you can put parentheses, parentheses here, um, but, you know, sometimes um, sometimes it, it gets a little bit confusing, especially if you have a lot of nested um, um, intervals, okay, or nested uh, functions. Okay. All right, so we're still not quite done with this problem, okay? Um, what, so, the, so what we need to do is to use number five, right? where we take, we can put the power in front. Okay, so we have not three times natural log of x, okay? Okay, and again, this one, okay, we can remember this, this part right here, This is the same thing as x minus two to the power one half. Okay. So we can, we can put the one half in front. We get one half times the natural log of x minus two. And then over here, we can bring the two in front. Okay. So we end up getting minus two times natural log of x plus one. All right, so there's our right, there's our results. Okay. So notice each of these examples that we did, right? Um, the, the one before one before this and the one before that. Um, each the last step, right? The last step was we used, right? We're using number five. Okay. So that's a so when you're expanding, you either use this or this or a combination of these, and then the last step you're using this one. So sometimes um, we may desire a result that we may want to use, right? Um, that is in a more condensed form. In other words, right? Given something like this, we want to go back to this form. So let's go over a couple examples like that. Because remember, you can go, right? These are equal, right? So you can go from here to here and vice versa, okay? Okay, let's say we have three times natural log two plus natural log of x squared 
the plus two. So this time we want to consolidate everything under 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 one natural log. Okay. So we have the expanded form and we want to condense this. So remember what I said last time when the, I, I mentioned um, in the previous example that the last step we did, we took care of the um, coefficient. This, right? So that's, so basically what we're going to do now is kind of reverse that, basically reverse that process. Okay. So we start with this and then, and then based on what we have, we can go from here to here. So that's the thing. When you're condensing these, you start with you look, you you basically look at your coefficients and then use those to to write them in terms of powers, okay? In in terms of these, okay? Okay. So let's see. So using again, so starting with number five. Using this one, okay, this can be written. This part right here can be written as natural log of two to the power three. So you can put three, right? So put three up here, okay? And then this one, you have natural log of x squared plus two. Okay, okay so now that we have, um, we have something to work with, okay? So this, we can go ahead and simplify this. This is just natural log of eight, right? Two, two to the power of three is two times two times two, right? Two times two is four, four times two is eight. Okay. Plus this one, plus two, okay. Okay, so we're here now. So again, what we, so what we wanna do is put everything in under a single natural log, okay? So we have plus here, so we're going to utilize number three. We're going to go from here to here. Okay? okay, so this part. That becomes natural log of 8x squared. And then two, right? So two is kind of uh, just hang, just kind of hanging out there. Um, so we have to get a little bit creative. So what we can do is we can use, we can go back and get a little bit clever here. Since we're trying to, since we're trying to put everything under a single logarithm, right? Okay. So we need to somehow write express two in terms of a natural log, and then and then we can con and then we can consolidate these. Okay, so we can do that by going back to this property. Okay, right. okay. So you may want to if you want to stop the video here and think about that, and then then go ahead. Okay. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go through that, show you. Okay. So two, right? So the way we can write two in terms of a natural log is we can rewrite this way. We can say natural log of e to the power two. See that? Okay, that's going back here, right? Natural log e to the x, that's the same thing as x. Okay, so let's apply that. So we used number one. Okay, there we go now. So now we have natural log of ax squared, sorry, natural log of ax squared plus natural log of e squared. And then again, we can utilize number three. So this, okay, okay is the same thing as natural log of ax squared times e to the second power. Okay? In fact, I'm going to write this way. And again, it doesn't matter if you put e squared 
after or before export. Okay. So there's our result. And uh, again, that was utilizing number three. Okay, so we have a nice consolidated uh, result of this. Okay. So we start off, we took care of the coefficients, three, and you, and you put three up here. Okay. And then uh, we combine, we consolidate this one, okay, natural log of the product of eight and x squared. And then we use this idea, right? You can rewrite, you can express two in terms of a natural log, natural e to the second part equals two. And again, the reason we did that is because we need to put everything under a single logarithm. So by doing this, okay, then we can consolidate this using number three, okay? All right, let's look at another one. Okay, so we want to consolidate this. Okay, so we start off again working with the coefficients. So we can apply number five. So we put one half right up here. Okay, so we get log four to the power one half base a. Same thing here. Log base a of five to the power two. And by the way, um, you can only consolidate the logs if you if you're working with the same base, right? So these are the same. If so, if this was like a and this was another value or another letter, then you can't you couldn't technically consolidate this. Okay. And you can see that here in the formulas, right? Okay, these have to be the same uh, for the basis. Okay, so what next? Um, so then we put, we can merge everything together. So we have a, we have a difference here. So therefore we're gonna, we, need, we can utilize number four. Okay, so we go from a difference to a quotient. And by the way, four to the one half, that is the same thing as what? So four to the one half, half power is the same thing as square root of four. Okay. So. Okay. so x to the one half is square root of x. So we can go ahead and rewrite this as, I'll go ahead and do that now. And then five, and then five squared is is twenty five. Okay, so again, so we have so I simplified inside those parentheses, and then now we can go ahead and utilize number four. So we have this minus this. So that means that this is going to go on top of this one. Okay, so we have log. Right? Log base A of 2 over 25. And that's base A. Okay. And there's our result. Okay. So this, right, this value, right, is equivalent to this. Okay. All right. Okay, let's look at another one.
Okay, this one has a, quite a few things going on here. So, but in any case, right, we need to express this as a single log, as a single logarithm. So we start off with, again, with the coefficients, okay? So using number five. Okay, so we're gonna have log base A raised to the negative two. So again, put negative two up to there, okay? Right. And then we have plus log base A of two to the power three. So we took three, right, and put it on the power as an exponent for two. And then we have minus this part. Okay, um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and simplify in the arguments here. We have log base a three to the negative two. Okay, that is basically the same thing as uh, one over three squared, which is one over nine. And then we have log base a of eight, and then log base a of x squared plus one. Okay. And that's nine. Okay, so let's first consolidate the, uh, the plus part here. So that's, uh, we can use right, number three. Okay, all right, so plus, okay, so we're gonna get um, eight, so eight times one ninth, which is just eight over nine. And we have this part left. So now we have a difference, okay? So now we need to utilize um, uh, number, see, number, uh, number four. Okay, so we have, right, we have a difference. So we're going to write that, express this log as a as a quotient. Okay, so we have log base a of eight ninths, all divided by x squared plus one. And that is the same as um, eight over, that's the same thing as So we have log, right? log base a of um, eight over nine times x squared plus one. And so you can, so it's good, it's, it's, should be able to simplify this, right? So eight ninths over x squared plus, x over x squared plus one, right? Um, that's the same thing as putting the nine in the denominator, okay? So, that is what we want. This whole expression is equal to this. Okay? That's the consolidated form. Okay, so again, we can, using these, right, we can expand, right, our logarithms or we can consolidate them. Depending, depends on what we need to do, right? Um, so let's look at one that involves the change of base formula, which is this one here.
So before, so many years ago, um, the, so talking about the graphing calculators, they used to not have, um, so they used to not used to not be able to put in um, the log of whatever number in, in the specific base. They didn't have like, they didn't have the template to do that. Um, so what you would have to do is you would have to use this formula, okay? So you would put in, it would take, because they had a built-in natural log function, right? Or, or remember, the log, if you don't see a base, a number on the log, it's assuming base 10. So if you're given something like this, for example, okay? let's say log six, and you want to find, let's say I have one here. Let's say you want to find log of 35, base seven. So if you wanted to calculate this on the cal on your calculator, right, then what you would have to do is you would have to rewrite this um, as log of 35 divided by log seven. Okay. All right, good. So, Again, many years ago, they, they have the log function, but they don't have a way to enter this using putting in 35 and 7, okay? So you would have to write it, you would have to enter it in this way, or you would have to enter it in using the natural log, right? Okay. But nowadays with the current, yeah, with the newer PIs, um, they definitely, they have a, you can basically type this in. They have a template for that where you can enter the number and the base and it will give you the value. Uh, but still, this is a very useful, this is a, still a very useful property, especially when it comes to solving equations um, and maybe proving some other identities. Um, so, okay, so given this, right, then we can, on your calculator, um, you just type in uh, whatever, right? If you want to use log, remember, if there's no number here. This is assuming you're, you're using base 10. Okay, or you want to use natural law. Okay, so this works out to be approximately one point eight two seven one. Okay, here's another example. So you want to find log of, let's see, log of root two. With the base of one third. So this is equivalent to, let's say log of root two over log of one third. And I'll go ahead and just put the parentheses there. Okay. And again, because you don't see the base there, there is no specific base here. Okay. So that means we're assuming we're working with base 10. Okay. Um, if you're using if you're using base E, okay, if you okay, then you can rewrite this in terms of natural. Okay. Okay, and by the way, there's a something connected to this. Um, there's a another interesting property. If you have log of let's say one over let's say um, x, okay, then what we can do is we can, um, or let's say natural log, let's make this. Since that's what we have here. So let's use this. Um, so you have natural log of one over X, okay? Um, and this also, well, this also works for log, but in any, any case. So we can simplify that, okay? Uh, using, right, using this formula, okay? So we can expand this out. Right? This is equal to natural log of one minus natural log of X. And remember, natural log one, okay, is equal to, Zero, 
because if you look at the plot of natural log, the x-intercept occurs at one comma zero. So therefore this is zero. And we end up getting minus natural log of x. So anytime you have natural log one over something, right? It's always gonna be the minus natural log of whatever here. So we can apply that here. You have natural log of square root two, and this, right, this is just minus, right, using that property, okay, minus natural log of three. Yep. And then furthermore, we can also, we can rewrite this as natural log of two to the one half power divided by minus natural log of three. And then we can put the one half out, right? Put in front of the natural log, divided by minus natural log three. Okay. And so this is basically equal to, the minus here you can put in front, right? This is just minus, so one, one, minus one half, times natural log two over natural log three. Okay. Okay, and you could use so you can definitely you can use your calculator to get this to approximate this. Okay, all right. So that concludes the um, the lecture video for uh, going to the properties of logarithms. Okay, all right. Um, so the next video um, is going to uh, we're going to look at how to solve um, logarithm equations, which we're going to which again we're going to utilize some of these, some of these properties, okay?